Welcome in. We um, got about 50% of the of the people we're expecting to show up for this evening. So we'll just give maybe two, two more minutes. People are still rolling in and then we're gonna get going. In the meantime, I'm gonna, everybody that's on right now is gonna get a sneak peek. We're gonna be doing a quick go round, um, asking everyone to share uh, their name, the location, and then two sentences explaining why you chose to join us today. Um, and we're gonna have maybe 30 people. So if we're really gonna try and keep to those two sentences. And so now that you're on early, you can start thinking about what those two sentences might be. And uh, for those that you are feel comfortable doing so, um, if you wanna turn on your cameras, just to say hello, no, don't necessarily need to keep it on all the time. I know people are eating, people are moving and shaking and got other things going on. Uh, but it is nice to see people's faces, just to see who's showing up in the room when possible as well. Good evening. I am Kelvin Garvan in Los Angeles. Welcome, Kelvin. All right. Two minutes after, I think we'll get rolling. So as uh, I mentioned, uh, before we get going and, and kind of explaining about what this program is going to be, we really wanted to get a sense of who's in the room. Um, so we're hoping that, uh, and thank you, Crystal, for jump, dropping that in the chat. Um, if you want to introduce yourself, uh, you know, share your name, where you're coming from, and just uh, two sentences about why you chose to join us together. And, you know, also keep in mind, we, we will have maybe as many as 40 people. So my name is Tom Llewellyn. I'm with Shareable and based in Northern California in the Santa Cruz Mountains. And I'm really excited about sharing this model that uh, the folks at the People Powered Battery Collective in Oakland have created. I'll jump in next. What's going on, everybody? I'm Rome. I'm with Shareable as well. I'm also really, really stoked <laughs> to learn from People Power Battery Collective. And I'm also really, really happy and excited to be and learn with you all. Hi, I guess I'll go next. My name is Aretha Howard, pronounced um, like Aretha Franklin with a B. <laughs> and um, the reason I'm here is because um, I'm the one everybody come to when there's a problem and how to solve it and what to do. So just trying to stay a step ahead of the game. Nice to meet you. Hello, I'm Eugene Beer in Columbus, Ohio with radio station, community radio, WGRN, the Green Renaissance. My friends call me the battery man. Oh, God. All right. Welcome. Thank you. Oh, my name is Wasiu Adesopa. I'm from Chicago. I'm with Blacks and Green. And uh, I'm here to learn about the initiative uh, being pioneered by the folks in uh, California. Thank you. Uh, I can go. Uh, hi, my name is Eloy Ortiz. Uh, Tom, I think I'm near you in the Santa Cruz Mountains, um, but I work down in uh, Watsonville, um, also known as Pajaro Valley. Uh, it, just quickly, uh, the, the town of Pajaro flooded back in March, so we're just looking at different resources that we can provide uh, to the people down there, Very a lot of very low-income folks. Hey, I'm Kwame Abdul Bay in Little Rock, Arkansas. I'm very curious, and I believe in mutual aid and communal self-sufficiency. I'm seeing folks dropping stuff in the chat, too. Thank you for... I should have done that. Then incognito. So I'm Cindy Johnson. I'm in Detroit, Michigan. Hi, Crystal. And um, I'm with 
uh, polar bear solar energy, but I have actually been thinking about this since 2016 and I was told it can't be done. So I am so excited to uh, find out how it can actually be done. Thank you. Good to have you, Stephanie. Hi everyone, my name is Arisa. Um, I'm a PhD student at Stanford. And I'm here partly because my research focuses on um, equitable clean energy transition, but also because we have a lot of blackouts in the area that Stanford is not affected by because we have our own grid. Hoping to help with that. Right? Yeah. Anybody else like to introduce themselves or where they're coming from and why? Hello, I am Kelvin Garvan. I am in Los Angeles, and I'm very interested in learning how, one, to show up for one another in a community, and also to show up with energy, with the ability to mitigate the impact of not having energy. Thank you. Hi everybody, my name is Tony. Sorry, I'm off camera. I'm moving around a lot. I'm calling from Chicago. My interest is in how power moves through both our material world and, and through human beings and the way we relate to one another. I'm very grateful for this space. Hello, my name is Martha Armas Kelly and I am from the Central Valley. Welcome. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Hello. Hi. Oh, good. Martha? And not scrambled. Welcome. Yeah. Anne, are you jumping in? Anne Meredith? Nope. Okay. Hi, I'm Judy. I'm Nikayla. Hello. We're currently in San Francisco right now. Um, I'm a teacher slash farmer in San Francisco and hoping to learn more about how to be energy resilient, especially with climate change. And I'm a tattoo artist and Judy told me about this and I honestly don't know much at all, but it sounded very interesting. So I'm excited to learn. Woo, learning together. Woo. <laughs> That's awesome, welcome. I'm Gabrielle. I'm with the Chicago, well, the Permaculture Institute of Chicago, and there's a couple of our folks in our metro area who are here. So we're looking to support, um, we're having some energy issues with a lot of tornadoes um, and also a lot of flooding. And so just uh, people are impacted. So we're looking to be support. Thanks for, and Meredith, letting us know about this. Yeah. Excellent. Good to have groups show up. Hey everybody, Kyle Kreider, Birmingham, Alabama. Crystal, so good to so good to see you again. And uh, I'm here because I'm a learning nerd, but uh, we're also working on a project that's the perfect fit, something we call for resilience to restoration. Great to have you, Kyle. And for the person that just called in, we're just doing a quick go round, um, having people introduce, uh, you know, share their name, where they're coming from, and you know what brought them uh, to here today, just in a, like two sentences. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Al Walker. Uh, I am from Chicago, Illinois. I live in the south side of Chicago. I am a uh, gardener, 
I'm also in the uh, cooperative and solidarity economy space here in Chicago, uh, where I am a worker owner in a technology and business services cooperative. We also have a network of uh, folks that work in the energy, renewable energy, and um, accessibility and equitability space. So I'm very interested in learning how this that translates to this particular uh, opportunity. Thank you. Hey, sweet love, how y'all doing? Uh, my name is Ann Meredith, I rock with Sheehan Hires, coming from uh, Bobancha, um, New Orleans, Crossroads, the United Hama Nation, Biloxi, Choctaw, Chidi Macha Lands and Waters. Um, yeah, we're at the crossroads of, of all, you know, hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, uh, energy companies cutting off our things. We had the highest eviction rate at one point in the country. Um, so we've been bootlegging, building our own solar generators and power things, and we'd love to continue to connect and build with uh, all the powerful good folks around the way. Um, so send in. Deep love and respect to y'all and all the folks that you hold dear. Excellent. Last last call. If we missed anybody. Yeah, I'll go. This is uh, greetings, everyone. Uh, peace, salam, uh, Huda al -Kaf. Found and director of Wisconsin Green Muslims. And uh, so we're really um, working on how to become our community to become uh, more uh, resilient and restored and um, in the face of climate change. So definitely this would be a tool that can help us uh, be in that uh, space. Thank you. Welcome. Go next. I'm Alice, Alice Sun, um, principal of Green Bank Associates. I'm here on unceded Ohlone territory, otherwise known as the East Bay near Oakland, California. Um, I am here. Uh, first of all, I have to shout out, say thank you, Crystal, for sending out <laughs> the notice for this. Um, for, for many of the same reasons that everybody has talked about for resilience in the communities, but also trying to um, understand it myself so that I can help other communities and bring it to uh, possibly to public schools, Title, Title I public schools. So I'm interested to see how that would work and how um, cooperatives work uh, and understand that better. So thanks so much. Okay, I feel like we've all arrived. It's it's so wonderful to not only, you know, we've gotten to kind of read some about it. a number of y'all went from the form that you filled out. And um, we also felt it was really important for everyone to get to know who was in the room uh, beyond just us and and kind of learn about the other things that are going uh, all around the US. Um, so I'm going to pass it on to Rome, who's going to kind of start to introduce the the program. What's going on, everybody? I'm so excited and so happy to have met you all. Um, first, I'm going to tell you all a little bit about Shareable. Um, so we're at Shareable, <laughs> Tom and I. Uh, we're two of the organizing um, team members from Shareable. We've been around since 2009. Uh, we are a news and action media outlet that established a deep history and role in bringing the sharing economy um, to the cultural mainstream in many ways. Um, but something we've sensed um, is that having a more kind of like expressive hand in the solidarity economy also meant having a direct impact on the ground to challenges our communities were facing every day. Um, so we've kind of merged our focus from that place of inspiration and getting folks to, you know, um, have like awareness of different issues that were going on in different communities around the globe. Um, and we're merging that to like, action, really activating folks and getting folks really involved in different projects within their community. So this is all um, about 
like Solidarity Works, our program. This is really where this all comes from and this is where it all stems from. Um, and that's really where y'all come in. Um, one of our objectives is to share what we've learned about sharing and solidarity economies with everyone. And we wanna work in uh, collaboration with a kind of like a gang of educators, abolitionists, um, organizers around the globe, right? Um, something that we are creating is um, a series of like digital toolboxes that are packed with accessible and useful learning material to adapt to a variety of social contexts that you can kind of like take home and see how it can fit um, and make a change and a difference in your community. So we are also creating learning communities like this one um, for folks to kind of reach across that distance and find one another um, and begin being a resource of support for one another as we build uh, toward different versions of operations. Um, so we started Solidarity Works with the goal in mind to essentially make the process of building solidarity economy projects in diverse communities more accessible and interactive so that folks don't feel like, you know, change is impossible or don't feel isolated from being able to take action in a very visceral way. So over the years, this program um, will essentially develop a series of something called collabs, <laughs> which are essentially virtual learning series and communities and training grounds packed with like workshops like this one, um, open source learning templates, which you'll have in the future, um, funding and fellowship opportunities and a deep system of support around making solidarity economy projects an accessible venture for everyone. So just really quickly, there are two kinds of collabs. Um, one is more capital intensive with a year long commitment and also has like a fellowship element to it that includes seed funding, a monthly stipend and personalized mentorship, right? So that one is more of a long haul project and we call that our deep collab and our project of focus for that this year is Library of Things. So Tom, if you have a, at any point, you can just drop in um, some info on our Library of Things uh, collab for folks who may be interested but right now you're in something called our sprint collabs, which are essentially like eight week learning sprints with a focus on less capital intensive community projects, right? And so our first project, our pilot project um, that we're running is the emergency battery collab. And that's what y'all are here for. Um, so I'm so excited to welcome you all to share this space with us, with Shareable um, and with People Power Battery Collectives. Thank you all for coming. I know that was a lot. So if you have any questions, you know, <laughs> do not be afraid to, to let us know. Uh, yeah, please pop questions in the chat as we go, and then we'll have uh, time for people to speak up a little later as well. And I think with that, we're going to uh, pass it over to the People Powered Battery uh, Collective to take over. Cool, we can uh, do that. Uh, let me, I guess, let me share my screen real quick. Uh, tch, tch, tch. Um, so here. All right, and Yasir, did you want to kick us off? But I guess I'll just quickly say, uh, so hello, I'm Kansas. Very nice to meet you all. Uh, with the People Power Battery Collective and look forward to working forward and learning together with you guys in the, the coming sessions. Uh, peace, everyone. Um, thank you all for joining us. Um, we are People Power and we are the Battery Collective spinoff of People Power. Um, we'll get more into that as we start learning more about um, our lessons and as we start to get to know each other a little better. Um, yes, my name is Yasir and I'm working with uh, Kansas. I think his handle on here might say Eric, but secretly his name is Kansas. Um, you got your government name up there, I might want to change that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also I'll be introducing Crystal as well. Um, so I actually can introduce her now, Crystal. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so, so, yeah, we're so excited to be learning with you all here. We're about to embark on a journey of eight weeks together to try to figure out how we can build 
a battery backup emergency battery in your community because we know that just from remember back in COVID times when the 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 toilet paper was out when people were hoarding toilet papers we don't have to be hoarding batteries we can be sharing these things especially when these things cost thousands of dollars how can communities do it all together knowing that a lot of times power shut off don't happen for everyone all at once um, we're really excited to be sharing with you recognizing that we all are very busy a lot of us are organizers so we don't have a lot of time being online with each other so we designed this course to just be one hour a week so hope that you can commit to an hour a week with us for the next four weeks we're going to have back to back four weeks of one hour engagement to learn about how we at People Power Solo Cooperative did a little project group spin-off of the Battery Collective to engage in the power shutoff that actually started in the Orange Day. I don't know if people remember in 2020, San Francisco or then most of Northern California was completely orange. It's not even just air pollution orange, it's completely orange with like, you can see far, but it's orange no matter what time it is during the daytime. And so when people are coming together trying to figure out how do we actually build, this is how we will, we're so excited to be sharing what we learned and learning with you so we can all learn together for the next four weeks. And then following that, we'll be doing an office hour where we can check in with each other to try to see how we can implement that in your community. Any questions you might have, create plans so that we can actually keep moving things forward together as a community. We're so excited to say more, but I don't, I'm gonna hold myself back and um, toss it over to Kansas to walk us through on our objective. And, and also just a little bit of intro, I forgot to mention that the three of us are based in the East Bay and San Francisco Bay area, the land of the Ohlone people, the Ramotuish Ohlone people, that's where Kansas is based off in the so-called San Francisco area. And Yasir and I are based on of the Confederal village of Lashan in the Oakland Berkeley area. So we're very, very excited to be sharing what we learned here uh, with you and learning with you all together. And here are the objectives. Peace hey, so, all. So yeah, just we just wanted to establish, first off, just thank you all for all showing up. It's amazing showing up and being present is the first step to really engaging with community and even learning. Um, so really appreciate that. And we just wanna be clear about what we want to set out as a, a collective uh, leadership or uh, not leadership, but like uh, teachers, I guess, or whatever, educators uh, are trying to set out to hope in part. So we're just clear about what you guys are going to be learning and uh, hopefully engaging with uh, in this course here. So we just put out three real quick. And these are just summaries, but we hope that you guys, you know, uh, at the end of the series can be activated to set up your own backup powder uh, mm -hmm. collective supply. So uh, by the end of it, hopefully you have enough knowledge and enough uh, support from both this community and your own local community to start getting those uh, systems in place. Additionally, we want to be able to get you be able to be organized and host community meetings to talk about the issues that are happening in your community so that you have uh, build resilience and connections that really matter for when things in your community uh, happen. And as we heard from everyone. Everyone's in their own unique community in their own unique place and time. And your requirements, your needs of your community, and even the abilities of your community, right? Um, all are dependent on where you are. So hopefully by the end of this, you will feel empowered enough to be uh, able to feel like you can hold meetings in your community geared towards what you think is important, supporting the communities and the people you see uh, are important. The last point here is uh, you would be able to make uh, connections on how to use all of these things you've learned, these tools, these communities, um, and how to organize them to effectively share resources. So we'll be focusing on backup batteries and uh, you know uh, battery supplies, but that doesn't mean that these uh, learnings can't apply to any type of resource that could be shared, whether it would be food, water, um, or any type of thing. A lot of the objectives of this is to try to help us break our boundaries and our understanding of our trained models to help us realize that we are powerful and that we can come up with creative solutions. I 
I don't think we need to go into that detail since Kansas, you, you already went into <laughs> detail each of the objective for, for them now. Okay. Okay. Well, that, okay. So that's, that, that is it, I guess. Then. Yeah. Here. So yes, sir, go ahead. We can cover a couple of other quick things just um, as the onset here. So we want to make sure that all the participants understand uh, one, the vocabulary that we'll be using. Mm. So it's very important that when we have, especially this type of learning environment, when it's a virtual learning environment, that everyone's on the same page. So if we use a word or say something and you're like, that doesn't sound right, or hmm, what the hell are they talking about? Please drop in chat, like, a, um, you know, what the hell are they talking about? So we can clarify that and take care of that right away. Um, in an in-person environment, it's a lot easier to engage that way because you can just be like, you know, we can read your body language and say, okay, we're not on the same page. Over virtual, it's very difficult, especially if people are not video sharing. So please speak up, don't be shy. Um, we're all here to learn. And if we're all using the same vocabulary and all understanding each other's vocabulary, it's a lot easier to, um, to convey our messages with each other. Um, I think that might be good for now. So we'll be diving deeper into this and hope to get to know and learn everyone um, as the course goes along. As Crystal mentioned, it's uh, four weeks after today, um, back to back, same time, same channel. So we hope everyone can tune in um, and we'll pass it back over to uh, the collab. Yeah, thanks for passing it back. Um, so yeah, as was mentioned, we're gonna have these these four kind of project-based learning sessions, then there'll be additional support. Um, and that'll be coming over the next number of weeks. Um, if you are interested in kind of hearing before we get to next week's session, um, a little bit deeper uh, information about the experience that of the folks in, o in Oakland and how they started the, the first battery collective that we're modeling off of, we did an episode of the Response Podcast, which is a podcast that Shareable does, which focuses on how communities are building collective resilience in the wake of disasters. And um, Roman, I don't know if maybe you can grab the link to that. Um, and so there's a link to an hour-long conversation that really kind of previews um, the, the why and, and kind of the initial steps of getting it off the ground. So would invite folks to, to listen into that as well. Um, Rome, you want to kind of talk about the next steps for the collab? Yeah, for sure. So next steps for the collab. Um, essentially, we have folks in here who are already registered. Some of you have already received the email from me telling you, you know, get on Canvas. We <laughs> um, make sure you register for the collab. Make sure your name is in there. Make sure you're in the, the learning community space. Um, some folks are in here who are probably like, hey, I don't know. I'm here to learn. I want to know what these folks are all about. I'm testing the waters. I want to see if I want to stay. That's okay. That's 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 perfectly fine. We welcome that into the space. Um, but so for the next week, um, for those folks who are still deciding, you have until August 1st to officially like register into um, the collab. And this will essentially give you access to Canvas. This will give you access to your learning community members. We'll talk about what Canvas looks like. We'll talk about the discussion forum and what, how that will um, operate within your learning experience and your learning journey. But essentially what you'll be doing is if you aren't, you aren't already fully registered for the course, you don't know what I mean, what I'm talking about when I'm saying Canvas. Um, essentially what you'll be doing is registering, making a decision if you want to stay and registering for the, the, the collab officially, and I'll be locking you in on Canvas so that you can have access to the, the virtual learning community. All these folks here, um, you all could be sharing resources with each other. We'll go into what that'll look like uh, in a moment. Say for now, I think I'm passing it right back to you, Tom. Uh, we want to talk about the battery pack giveaway. Yeah, and I think um, I believe almost everybody that joined us today has already filled out the um, kind of intake form. Um, but if you haven't, uh, there's a link for that in the chat, and just kind of gets a lets us know a little bit more information about where you are, where you're coming from. Um, the other thing I wanted to say, I, I did put this in the chat. Um, the podcast is a great way, great tool to share with others who may be on the fence or be interested in joining to learn a bit, little bit more. If they're not gonna, um, we're gonna be posting this video. And sharing with everyone who joined tonight uh, and everyone who registered, there's a few people that couldn't join us live. 
Um, and so the video is also going to be available, but oftentimes it's hard to get people to sit down and, and watch a video for an hour and maybe easier to send a link to an audio piece to get inspired and excited about the project. So feel free to use that tool as well. Um, another thing I wanted to just address is that we are working with several companies that make um, emergency um, battery like uh, electric generators um, about sponsoring um, this course. And so we've got some opt-in from one already. We're talking to two more and we've been you know, engaging with a few others. Um, and so the idea is that everyone that, that follows through and, and goes through the next eight weeks with us um, we'll end up getting at least one battery um, to be able to start the project. Um, we'll also be talking about creating batteries, uh, not having to necessarily spend the money to be able to buy these, these ones. We'll, we'll, in addition to getting batteries from some of these companies, we're also working on getting uh, you know steep discounts and everything else like that to be able to set people off um, in the best way possible. Um, to be able to qualify to get a battery, um, we're asking that, you know, folks engage with all five sessions if possible. So starting today, um, and attending at least three of those five live, um, and then some amount of engagement on canvas, you know, starting at least a thread, posing a question or answering somebody else's question or, and, and doing that. Um, and then in the end, which was mentioned earlier. So after we have these, um, four more sessions after today, then it's going to go into like project support. And we'll have three weeks of weekly sessions um, to support uh, folks that are working on their plans. So it'll be necessary to submit some sort of a project plan and then to do some amount of, of outreach. So either doing a needs assessment, uh, you know, hosting an open meeting or event for others in the community to, to show up, doing some amount of external outreach to be able to bring the group together. And if those, sure. if those things are uh, met, then we will be sending out batteries and, and getting that support out there. Um, and with that said, we're also going to be putting together um, a pretty cohesive toolkit um, with sample backend documents, you know, things like that, uh, based on oh, the, that the ones place. that are being used by the, um, by the Battery Collective here in the Bay Area. Um, so we'll be giving a number of resources to be able to get folks off onto the best foot possible. Hello. Hi. I have a question. If we yep. are working for one organization and we're affiliated to several organizations, could it be a collaborative project or regional project or mm -hmm. does it have to be by county? It could definitely be collaborative regional. It can mold and definitely also encourage uh, people that are joining us today solo to bring friends, um, yeah. you know, follow uh, Judy's yeah. example and yeah. uh, bring, bring other people. <laughs> Welcome to Kayla. Yeah, um, I really see the need for this. It's, it's so great that um, you're bringing this forward for us and our community because I'm in the Central Valley, and for us, it's really hard to be able to glean on a lot of projects. We kind of get the aftermath, so it's kind of nice to be part of something as it's happening and as it's evolving. Um, I, I work in Stanislaus County for a Catholic Charities organization, and we deal with environmental justice issues uh, straight across the board from any type of uh, medium with environmental justice. And then I'm also on a board with Community Initiatives for Collective Impact in Merced County. And uh, we have all kinds of un, uh, you know, unincorporated areas that like when we had these floods that just happened not too long ago in February, uh, people were with completely without power, completely without food uh, resources. And we set up uh, a command station, Ground Zero. And, and I did take some FEMA classes, but it was like nothing will prepare you for what you're going to encounter when you're in it, right? Mm -hmm. And, and the resources, how do you acquiesce, you know, laundry mats? How do you get, you know, food? How do you uh, use your resource? So it, like everything that I've learned, power mapping, asset building, all that, just like crash course, it happened right in my face as it was happening. And, and this, to me, like you said, um, the I'm hoping that the tactical practices that we're going to kind of touch will allow us that space for understanding how to navigate not just in energy, but also, like you said, food and other resources, so that when those things happen, we're fully uh, 
best to at least have a, a good strong idea of how to set something up and and looking at it as a regional approach because this is an issue that's not going to go away and uh, many times we're looking at climate as a seasonal approach or wildfires or floods but it's going to become more frequent than infrequent and we need to have i guess a sop or standards of operation on how to handle these things and oes is great but they don't really deal with the community at the basal level and this mm -hmm. is where it's at these are the grassroots groups that are talking with the families that are dealing with these issues yep yeah thank, thank you for bringing that up um martha yeah i think a, a large part of part of our instruction and in our coursework is based off of community um and just understanding you know that bridge between environmental justice and community justice and how they're both the exact same thing um, and also preparing individuals to learn how to build community, uh, probably so much that you may be like, where the hell is the battery? <laughs> so we just wanna make sure that you understand that yes, we feel you and that is definitely our focus here. Um, how, to, how to formulate that community, how to develop that community and how to make that a community that knows how to respond um, and also see down the road for what possibilities may arise that we can prepare for early. So thank you for bringing those points up. And I see Sun has their hand raised. Hey y'all, sorry for the background noise. I'm driving on a very bumpy highway. Um, I was just gonna ask, so a lot of the organizing that I do is across the diaspora. Um, and so like I'm originally from Kenya and I organize with queer Kenyans. And one of the things they've always mentioned, um, so I go there like maybe once or twice a year, but there's a real problem with power and outages and I'm wondering like before I invite people like I know people mentioned regional do you think this would translate well for people organizing outside the U.S. especially with like the shipping of the battery and that kind of thing also if this is better to talk like after the meeting I'm happy to connect with someone then we can definitely engage after the meeting I will say uh you know one thing that will be difficult is just the time zone that we're doing this live um, for folks in Kenya. Um, with that said, all of these resources that we're creating as part of this course are going to be made free and available for anybody to use and adapt. They'll all be published with a Creative Commons license. Um, so if it didn't work out for them to participate now, it could potentially work out for them to engage with the materials later. And if you go through the program now, you'd be in a better position to support them. Um, also, we are committed to supporting um, folks joining internationally. And if that means that we need to put a little bit of budget towards uh, shipping something or buying something locally, you know, that's online that gets there easier, you know, whatever that looks like, we could make that work as well. So I also want to echo, want to echo what um, Kansas has shared about the objective of our course. Since we have a very short period of time, I don't want us to feel like as we're working towards responding to emergency we don't want to respond to this community care with more urgency because that could create false solution and desperation so how do we actually create a space to really focus on what is the most important and for us in our learning experience we really feel like what we really need to prioritize is in the objective that Kansas shared is how do we get you to feel comfortable organizing and hosting community meetings about battery sharing how do you then make a connection on how to use these tools to organize more shared resources to power mapping that Martha mentioned? So these should all translate to anywhere you go and anything you wanna share with your communities. But what we'll be focusing on is going to be very much around batteries for now, because we do have a very short period of time. We wanna make sure we all feel comfortable. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that, Crystal. Um, speaking, we spoke so much about communities. So let's go into it. Something I wanna um, go into regarding, if you all had a chance to go on Canvas, if you haven't yet, we'll, we'll get to it. But I'm gonna share my screen. We're gonna go over community guidelines really fast. Where was this? Um, so community guidelines, right? We're gonna be spending a lot of time together. We're gonna be talking in discussions live, but we'll also be talking in discussions on Canvas as well. So. Just some kind of like rules for engagement, not necessarily rules, but y'all know, um, a culture for engagement, right? One of them, be curious, open, and respectful. Um, so call in, not out, throw sunshine, not shade, meaning essentially if someone says something that just didn't sit right with you, you can always just call them in and say, hey, 
what did you mean by that? Be curious, you know, ask that person to kind of break it down, leave space and room and grace um, for all of that like, real communication to happen um, and really, you know, allow the person to come from where they come from um, and be open um, and receptive to what folks have to say. Uh, next one, articulating our thoughts can be tough. Everyone kind of communicates differently. Everyone has, has different levels of communication. People have different styles, people come from different backgrounds. So give benefit of the doubt, right? Give grace. And ask questions with openness for when you need that clarity. Um, another thing, we really prioritize care and rest. I love sleep. I think it's a really great thing. Um, I think it's awesome. I think we all should invest in as much time um, as possible for care and rest to come in, take time away when needed. Um, sometimes it's more important for you to be present you know, within your own personal life and that's okay. So you know, always know that all of our sessions will be recorded and available to you at a later time. So if you can't make it, you need to prioritize yourself, do so. Um, one mic, uh, this essentially means one voice at a time. So every folks may know that Zoom has a feature where you can raise your hand. Um, but one of the biggest things is, you know, if someone's speaking, give them that space to speak. Um, give them that space to finish your sentence, to finish your thought. Even if it, you know, you may be someone who's like, hey, I really want to jump in. Oh, I see what you mean by that. You know, that's natural. Um, and that's okay. But give folks kind of restrain yourself. You know, you've got to put yourself on mute and be like, yes, I agree. And I just, you know, if you got to do that, then do that. But give folks their time to like finish their sentences, finish their, finish their thinking. Um, another one, take space, make space. So kind of similar to that last one, if you're usually quiet, kind of challenge yourself. This is a space where you can challenge yourself, right? This is a space where you can kind of open yourself up to take more space. We're welcoming you up in this space, right? Um, and also if you usually talk a lot, like you may be very talkative, that's you. Um, be mindful and kind of leave room for quieter voices, especially if you've talked a lot during the session or you've been the primary person kind of jumping in. Give folks, you know, some chance um, and an opportunity to kind of jump in and give their perspectives to the space. Um, next one, lean into inclusive language. So this is kind of like avoiding jargon or um, sometimes slang. I am a very slang person. <laughs> the city I'm from, I'm from Philly. We use slang all the time. I say John like every other sentence and a lot of people don't know what that means, right? So. <laughs> In this space, try to lean into more inclusive language. Um, try to practice uh, just, you know, making sure that folks can kind of understand where you're coming from. If you got to explain it a little bit, you know, do that. Make that make that space. Um, be aware of time. So this is something I've learned. Uh, it's like a little phrase, Elmo. I think it's cool. Um, and then essentially what it's saying is enough, let's move on. So it means if what you've expressed to say has already been said in many ways, there's no need to echo it, you know, we've heard it, we've all here, um, we're all here and we all can, you know, kind of be present in what's being said. So sometimes things don't need to be rehashed or, you know, dwelled upon too long. We only have an hour. So I don't know, sometimes you can just shout that out or put it in the chat and just be like, hey, you've been over this, let's get it. Let's move on, I'm excited. So <laughs> next thing, um, speak from your own experience, all right? So use, lean into those I statements rather than uh, generalizations. Um, so really uh, something about this space that I think is really special is that we get to learn from each and every single person who is here, right? We're really interested in hearing about your backgrounds. We're really interested in hearing about your personal experience. So lean into that, um, use that I, talk about, you know, this is a great time to talk about yourself, but really talk about your world, give us insight into your world, right? Rather than leaning into generalizations. Um, one last thing, challenge, challenge assumptions. So be open to new ideas. You know, we all, it's, it's human to just assume a lot, um, but learning really happens when we create that space between assumption and um, being introduced to something new. Let that space live. And so something, else for canvas this is kind of a great time to kind of um go through what canvas will look like for folks um, what you'll do 
for folks who are on Canvas. Um, you'll come on Canvas at any time, but specifically I'm thinking about like, during the week, if you're lost and you're like, wait, what, when do we have classes? When is this happening? What session are we on? Um, who can I contact? This Canvas is really your like one site to get a lot of different pieces of information. Um, you can find the syllabus here. You can find links to every meeting. And please know that this link that we're on right now is the only link we'll always be using. <laughs> um, so it should be very accessible for everyone, um, but you'll still find at different access points to the link. So this is the Canvas site. This is the first page, the syllabus. You'll get the overview of the collab. You'll get the, those main objectives that Kansas and the team already went over. You'll get your learning outcomes. You can do some outside reading. We'll tap right back into those community guidelines. And you'll also find that schedule, um, which has the link. But it's, it's all with the same link. So <laughs> you should always have that access. Access should be really easy for you to always drop into a meeting and an office hour. Um, another thing, if there's ever an announcement, um, let's say, not that it has happened, but if it's, you know, oh, you may need materials for this class or bring a paper and pen, you're going to need it. Um, you'll hear, you'll, you'll have that access from the announcement. So you'll get that notification from this announcement section. You'll also have the discussion section as well. So for this first week, um, right now, we're asking folks to take some time to listen to the response podcast with People Power Battery Collective. Um, we're also going to ask you all to choose one of the following questions. Throughout the podcast, you might have caught this phrase, collective governance, a few times. Um, are there any points made about sharing resources within the community that resonated with you and why? Um, what stands out to you um, about sharing energy and power as a resource within a community? What's unique about it? Uh, and you can list a quote from the podcast that jumped out to you the most and talk about that quote. So you can just choose one of these prompts. You don't have to do all three. If you want to, you can, but you only have to choose one of the following questions. You'll submit your response to the discussion forum, and you could also bounce around to other responses as they pop up to see what your learning community is taking away from this learning experience, this listening experience. Um, but if we go back to discussion, right? You'll also see something like this community guidelines. And this is if you would like to drop in a new community guideline. You wanna change something, you're like, hey, wrong. Y'all are missing this one big thing that I need in the community or that folks need from the community, or that my community really needs to be in this space, right? Or anything. You can list that right here and we'll drop it into co the community guidelines just to make sure that we all agree and we all feel like we're on the same page. Another thing that you could do, is go straight to the discussion section, right? And let's say you're starting to form that battery collective. You're starting to really think about what this would look like for your community. And you had a question or something you wanted to talk about they, that we didn't really get a chance to go into in class. And it's like the middle of the week, it's like a Thursday. And you're like, I need to talk to someone from that learning community. I have got to get this question out. You have autonomy to go right over here. Um, click uh, discussions. You could say, I am starting <laughs> my collective and I need help with this one thing, whatever, right? We'll type it in and you'll really express and go into detail about what you're thinking. You can post it and your learning community will hear it and folks will get access to it and we'll be able to respond um, right to your discussion. So at any point, you personally can start a discussion forum about anything that has to do with sharing resources, specifically sharing um, energy resources within a community, right? Um, and this is really a space for us to start that learning community. So please use the discussion forum. It is yours. It is made for you all to really utilize and really create that community space with one another. Um, another area, you've been I'm not letting me post it. <laughs> another area that you all be using in Canada is the course modules. Now, this isn't really necessary just yet. Um, these are just the same Zoom meeting links 
that you can use to get into each Zoom meeting. But later, um, when the recorded sessions become available, you'll find them here. So let's say you missed a meeting or a session, you're like, oh my goodness, what happened? I got to know, I need access, cool. You'll come right over here, you'll see the recorded um, session right here and you can click it and you'll be able to have access there. Um, another way, if you are still somehow struggling with getting that access to the meeting, and you're like, where do I go? Where's an easy way? You could just go over to calendar um, and at each calendar, you'll see here, and you could just click the Zoom meeting for each Tuesday that we'll be meeting. Uh, and this is essentially what Canvas is for. Um, this is really, uh, hopefully you all can feel it. This is really your space to um, really create that learning community and really begin to talk to one another through that learning community. Yeah. All right. Well, that is what we have for this first day. Um, and if wanted to make sure if there's any other questions after that um, you'd like to have answered. Um, and let you know that we're, you know, the team is going to be able to stick around for a few more minutes and, and answer any, uh, you know, one-off questions um, that you might have as well. Um, and otherwise, we look forward to, to having you all join us um, to all join in together for this journey. Thank you. And yeah, we've got a, uh, a question. Yeah, hi. Um, I might have missed it in the beginning because I was a little bit late. But um, did you guys mention how we have we get access to the rest of the modules on the uh, Canva? Because we don't have access at the moment, correct? You should have access to each of the modules. You don't have access to um, the recordings, which will be available. Um, afterwards and then you'll have access to each and every single one of the recording oh, okay yeah but those are only the links for now the zoom meeting links. okay cool thank you for sure I'm going to run over some questions real quick that are dropped in the chat before they disappear out of the chat so um question is how do we get others to join if one way you can get folks to join is between um, today and August 1st you can send folks this intake form, which they will fill out, and then they'll receive a Canvas registration, and then they'll be right in the community. Perfect. And the second one, and we'll get to Martha, is, um, are there any additional readings we should do on batteries, especially the making of batteries on the side in the meantime? Uh, I'll answer that. No. Uh, no, we're, we're going to cover everything. If you want to do your own research um, just to come up with questions, that's great. However, when we go over the batteries, we'll, we do a pretty thorough job of going over it um, and also point out, you know, pros and cons, things that we've tried that haven't worked, that do work, um, where to source. Uh, if you're going to do like a DIY battery, where to source the parts from and so forth. And if you're going to do an over-the-counter battery, uh, where to source those from as well. So we will cover that during the course. And I see Martha and then and. And just, just for clarification, the Canvas link will be sent later on if we didn't get it already, correct? Yes. Yeah. And also I would I would say please check spam and all mail. Sometimes it gets lost in the sauce. So yeah. yeah. Rome, when when was Hi. the last time you sent out um invitations? Uh earlier today, yeah few meetings in between but so this earlier this morning you should have received them but i'll do another um round uh tomorrow morning. yeah just so everybody knows yeah. we had uh the majority of people that registered have registered in the last 24 hours so yeah if you if you registered late towards the end you're not alone but it also meant that we're a little slower to send all the invites because they all came in at once thank you and and meredith Hey, Sri Um, So just as we're reaching out to community, dear ones to invite them to join, because I know we're going to have a whole mess of folks from around the Grove South who deeply, deeply need exactly what y'all are picking on. Um, 
the, the one of the big questions I've been getting from folk is like the scale of the batteries, right? So if we're setting, like when we're setting up community support hubs, is are y'all talking about batteries that will charge a few cell phones? Are y'all talking about batteries that will run fridges? Are y'all talking about batteries that will run ventilators, right? Mm -hmm. yep. So that's just honoring um, folks' like boundary medicine and capacity too. Um, Cause we have folks sharing the little like cell phone ones which are beautiful, but also yep. melts in the sun if you put them in your car and like explode. Um, but yeah, so that's that's one of the big questions I've been getting from dear ones. Also, are y'all gonna have Spanish language interpretation or interpretation support, like language justice, support in other languages, both for the workshops and skill shares and for any printed material that y'all are doing? We we will have it for um, for the in regards to the the question on Spanish translation. We will have translation available for the printed material but we do not have the capacity um, just yet to have it for these live sessions. But we are gonna be creating uh, transcripts of every single one of the workshops and then translating those transcripts. And there'll be like human edited transcripts, not digitally created you know, transcripts. So they should be pretty true to form. Um, and then did you, did you answer the battery question? No, regarding the battery question, yeah. um, we, what we will be discussing um, throughout the, the coursework is how to build a battery that yes, can operate and power a cell phone. Um, and also it's scalable. So you can take the concepts that we share with you about how to build a battery and build one for a refrigerator, or build one to uh, power a ventilator or build one for, so we'll be going over all of those things. And we'll also at the, the we hope that the participants and we'll be sharing information to hopefully educate the participants to um, be able to know like what wattage is, to know what amperage is, to know what type of batteries are um, and be able to distinguish those so they can take that information back to their communities um, and educate everyone. And I'll also say that the companies that we're talking to getting um, the uh, generators donated from, we have let them know the specs of needing to be able to power refrigerators and, and life-saving medical devices, et cetera. Um, a lot of these will probably be factory refurbished models and they may say, hey, we'll give you a, this whole lot of them. And some of them may be the higher wattage and some of them may be the lower wattage and, and we'll kind of figure that out. Um, but we're going definitely into this in mind with knowing the types of things that people are gonna be interested in having backup power for. Stephanie. Question. So are these, I've been messing around with multiple computers and telephones. Um, are these solar power generators or is there, you know, just not knowing how we're going to set these up? I'm hoping there's yeah, so from our experience in doing any sort of energy related resources for community sharing, we realized that the biggest barrier is not necessarily the object themselves. It's about how we actually build the community and build the messaging that can bring the resources in. So as you'll, you'll hear in the podcast episode, we'll talk a lot about, as Ro mentioned, like what's, what does community governance look like? collective go governance, why that matters, because ultimately that once we get that locked down, we can bring in the resource is not going to be a problem. And we really want to be able to spend the next four weeks engaging with you actively to try to like learn together on how we can actually get meet the needs of our community and establish what's like the focus to do so that we can actually start putting in the seeds for energy sharing and then start looking at more resources to come together. So then you you want to build as a, a um, battery sharing thing that's going to be powered by solar or going to be big enough to power a um, at anything you want, then you can do it. So we are not letting these these um, physical material become the the barrier for our community needs because when we're talking about designing for the future that's based on justice, we're talking about us coming together and deciding for what we want to see. 
so then we're not letting the engineers and the technical experts design what is possible. We're letting ourselves and our imagination de decide what is possible. And that's what we're, we're hoping for the next four weeks to be. And then when we have follow through in the, the following four weeks, we'll be like trying to understand how your community actually looks like bringing what we've learned over the next four weeks to come together and doctor it together and like and problem solve together. Okay, I look forward to watching the podcast. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Hope everyone can join us. I think we're at time. Yeah. I, we're at time, I should say. Yep. Thank, <laughs> yeah, you. Any last, Thank last... you all so much. See you next oh. week. Yeah, super excited. It's going to be so fun. Have a good night. Stay hydrated, yep. everyone. Yep.